Hello again. A little while back, a friend of mine gave me this Radio Shack meter. This is catalog number 22813. It's quite old. I've gone through and functional tested it. And we can see the meter is UL listed. Based on when this was built, I don't know what standards this thing would actually meet. Especially being able to have the uh, unfused input like this. I don't think that that would be allowed today by UL. This is one of those meters where they share the voltage input with the current. You can see right here it says 400 milliamps max. Here we can see the fuse and you can see the high current input. It basically goes from this center jack right up to the high current. There is no fuse. Unfused. So one of my concerns about testing this particular meter you can see our input jack goes right to the fuse not too surprising there but up here is our PTC and I wonder if I pop this fuse if the voltage input and stuff fails because if the fuse pops when I'm transient testing it what I'd have to do is just replace this fuse all the time and that could be a bit of a problem we notice the date here so it says uh, 2002 0716. I'm assuming that's when the circuit board was last revised. So what I've done here is I've attached our Gauss and Metrowatt looking directly across the inputs of the Radio Shack meter and then this Bryman meter is attached in series with it. So you can see I'm currently applying basically 25 volts and the meter isn't drawing any current. So what I'm going to do now is switch this over to the milliamp range and we can see the voltage drop across the meter is now about 116 millivolts and we can see the Bryman as well as the Radio Shack are reading basically the same current both roughly 50 milliamps so what I'm going to do now is just pull this fuse and of course the current goes to zero but you can see the voltage goes to zero as well so I don't really need to trace this out very far. I can just tell you that if the fuse here were to blow, that is going to cause this meter not to be functional as far as the voltage input. So I've seen other meters like this. I have this meter from Tech Power, for example. Uh, this is the same way. It has a fuse right in line with the input. So again, if I were to transient test this, same problem with the fuse blows, the meter basically becomes non-functional. And that's the reason I've never done anything with this meter. This is a, another meter that has the same problem. This is a analog style as well. Except this meter has been highly modified. It's still functional. You can zero it out. Read your resistance, no problem. So it works fine. But I've added a bunch of transient protection to this. This will actually survive my little mini surge test now. So again, we're on the 250 milliamp scale, so you can see the meter is reading roughly 50 milliamps right now, which corresponds with what the Bryman is showing as well. You can see I've increased the current quite a bit, and I'm just going to continue to increase it. And right there you can see the PTC had tripped. So again, if I were to take this, disconnect it, let the PTC cool, you can see we're dropping roughly 17 volts right now. And I'll reconnect our input jack. You can see it draws about 1.7 amps for just a slight amount of time. And then our PTC warms up and opens up. And I've actually seen on some of the cheaper meters I've looked at where they'll use a PTC rather than a fuse. And I can certainly see that for low voltage work. If you're working on like automotive stuff, for example, and you're only working around 12 volts, I think having a PTC like that in there, I would say that's acceptable. I can't say that uh, you could get away with that with a cat environment. I think it might be difficult to find a PTC that actually be rated for surge testing. Of course you've seen where I've tested this particular one on my own surge generator but again this generator that I use for testing does not meet the IEC standards it has quite a bit less energy than what those standards call for 
Again, looking at the inside, you can see they have a small spare fuse here. These are just rated for 250 volts, it looks like, at 500 milliamps. They are a ceramic type fuse, so that's good. These are each 5 mega ohms, so the total resistance here is 10. Uh, the resistor down here is a 1 mega ohm. My concern about this is that it would have some other low impedance path. There's one interesting thing right now. You see all the shielding on the front side of the meter up around the rotary switch? This is one of the modifications I made to this MetroHead Ultra. I've actually cut out a shield very similar to this and that's in addition to the shield that's on the back side. It's made out of netic. The shield on the front side I am just using a copper foil and again there's a spring now that's been soldered to the front shield of this that actually goes down and makes contact with the shield that's uh, stuck to the face of the meter. You can see all the spring contacts. These two are for the battery feed. These are for the beeper. And a small one down here for the back shield. Again, it looks like they've done a fair job. You can see the shields working up the side of the meter here. All up along here. Again, it's a shame that you don't see shielding like this inside this Gossam meter. But I don't see a whole lot on this thing for protection. Again, you just have the PTC thing that would concern me is going through this PTC which is like an 800 ohm part it goes off into this rotary switch and I'm not seeing much in here for clamps maybe the diodes along here okay, before we give it a ESD pulse let's just see how it handles some DC voltages so for this test we'll just be using the DC output of our ESD gun this should be roughly 230 volts And again, the meter on this is not all that accurate. So there's about 450. Looks like they overrange. They rate it 600 volts. Let's go ahead and we'll take it up to 1,000. So I don't hear anything as far as breakdown. Uh, the meter appears to work just fine still. So what I've done is I've changed this over to the pulsed output. Again, this generator will put out about a 15 amp peak and it'll do that in under one nanosecond. The open circuit peak voltage on this is about 4 kV. And again, I'll be applying five transients, both positive and negative, in each mode of the meter. Then we'll go back and functional test it. Alright, let me go ahead and hook this thing up to our little test jig and we'll see if it still works. Alright, so the Radio Shack meter passed the ESD test just fine. Next we'll start transient testing it. The generator defaults on power up to a thousand volts. This will be a 100 microsecond full width half height with a 2 ohm source. And again we'll apply five transients, both positive and negative, in each mode of the meter. You know, I'm wondering if we didn't already damage the fuse. Let's just try to short this thing out real quick. Yep. And yep, you can see the fuse is opened up. Alright, so again, this is with a short. You can see it's reading that just fine. This is a 0.5 ohm resistor. That looks good. This is a 1 ohm. That looks fine. This is a 50 ohm. That looks good. Here's a 100 ohm. So there's 1K, 10K, 100K. There's 1 meg. 
there's a 10 meg let's see if it'll do a 40 meg nope cannot do that let's see if we damage the current input should be 100 microamps that is correct let's try it with AC this should be roughly 115 milliamps of course the voltage inputs work just fine uh, this will be 5 volts and it should be 2.7 again this meter is a averaging type meter so the 2.5 that you would normally see as RMS should actually read roughly uh, 2.78 typically for an averaging meter you can use pi over the square root of 8 I think I'm just going to cut this video short you know the meter is functional it's pretty old again I'm not sure really what we would learn from it I really don't have the desire to change the fuse for every transient that I actually apply to it and I think that's what I'd have to do and I don't think it's really a fair test to basically short the fuse out to run the test so yeah I think that's going to be it for this video kind of a letdown well until the next meter later